Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And the preceding episode I taped was really to look at how the training of healthcare workers, how the training of doctors has changed in my lifetime. From one of understanding disease physiology to being epidemiologic based and outcome based, and how doctors are now incapable of, because of our lack of training, because of the way we're trained, of understanding root cause diseases. And um, you may think, okay, well, this is not such a big deal, but I'm going to give you a glaring example that just blew my mind. I mean, I'm still trying to put the flames out on the top of my head about how this horror has blown my mind. And so what happened is I belong to a number of of, uh, forums in the different specialties that I practice. One of those is the bariatric surgery specialty. And there's a forum where doctors ask questions and um, sometimes they get answers, sometimes they don't. But it gives us the classic way of thinking of doctors in different specialties. So, for example, I belong to an LCHF group, and we talk a lot about um, the the cause of uh, uh, lipid diseases of our blood vessels. Why do atheromas occur? And we know that it's sugar, not fat, and we kind of have counter arguments to the lipid heart hypothesis. Well, I'm going to read you something that came across my desk, and this is just amazing to be able to read. So, this is in a closed group. I shouldn't necessarily be doing this, so I'm going to try to keep it as anonymous as possible. But the, And I'm going to use big words, and I'm going to explain the big words. But here's the way it goes. Postprandial hyperinsulinemia, hypoglycemia, brackets, acquired nasidioblastosis, reversal versus distal pancreatectomy. Okay? So postprandial hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia means that After we eat, we get a surge of insulin that massively drops our blood sugar to the point that it can almost reach symptomatic or or dangerous levels. So we eat food. We'll come back to that in a second. We get a surge of insulin, and then we get this massive drop of hypoglycemia. And the brackets acquired nasidioblastosis. Nasidioblastosis is something I deal with as a pediatric surgeon where some babies are born, at least this is our thinking, with an excess of insulin-producing cells. And these babies have profound, almost impossible to treat hypoglycemia. Their blood sugars are so low that it can cause seizures and cause brain damage. So as surgeons, the therapy for nasidioblastosis, congenital nasidioblastosis, something the baby's born with, and I'm going to, again, going to question this, but is to take out 95% of their pancreas. Because the cells that produce insulin and glucagon are located in the pancreas, so you remove 95% of the pancreas, and at least those babies then have normal blood sugars or hyperglycemia now because they don't have insulin, and you can then treat them, basically you're creating almost a type 1 diabetic situation. Sometimes they're normal, sometimes they have type 1 diabetes. So the assumption here is that people with hyperglycemic, sorry, hyperinsulinemic, high insulin production, drop in blood sugar to dangerous levels, and clearly it's dangerous, have acquired nasidioblastosis. Somehow, magically, they've grown these massive amounts of cells that release huge amounts of insulin. And the treatment, the question really is, can we reverse, can we reverse that hyperglycemic hypoinsulinemia, that postprandial hypoglycemia, or do we have to do a pancreatectomy on these patients? Okay, do we have to remove their pancreas to solve this problem? And this is from the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery. So it's from the Official Association of Bariatric Surgeons. And the question comes legitimately from a a, a surgeon in this group who says, hello. And this is asking a question. I've done some research uh, online, but as it is fairly uncommon, I wanted to ask, with patients with classic PPHH, postprandial hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia after gastric bypass. So this condition occurs after Roux and Y gastric bypass, after a metabolic surgery designed to reduce caloric absorption and malabsorption of other nutrients. After a gastric bypass, with patients with classic hyperglycemia hyperinsulinemia syndrome, after gastric bypass, is there good success with reversal of the gastric bypass? In other words, trying to restore the anatomy to normal. 
We have had three patients who have responded to distal pancreatectomy. This group does gastric bypass. They've seen commonly postprandial hyperinsulinemic hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia. And for three of those patients, they've treated them by ripping out their pancreas, by removing their pancreas. We have had three patients who have responded to distal pancreatectomy. <laughs> but this patient, hello, would rather have reversal of her bypass if this is an option. What do you guys think? She is three years out from gastric bypass. Sugars dropped to as low as 30s with meals. And has been on a carabos, which is a type of, of uh, sugar, it's a sugar substitute that blocks that insulin. This is a legitimate question and a legitimate problem that is occurring in our society. And here's the thinking, that somehow magically a gastric bypass, which has all these wonderful things, gets rid of insulin resistance, gets rid of type 2 diabetes, these patients lose a ton of weight, um, they're wonderful, they're happy, they lose 100 pounds, they're skinny, um, they're, they're much healthy. Three, that happens in the first year. By the second and the third year, now all the damage of malabsorption is happening. Because they can't absorb all the nutrients they should be absorbing. And because the surgery is so effective, what advice do they give these patients? Eat less, do more. Eat less, do more. Eat less, balance your diet. Balance your diet, eat fewer calories. Don't drink coke, eat fewer calories, and exercise more. Exercise. Yeah, you must get out there and exercise. That is the foundation of the metabolic treatment of these patients. They do this horrific surgery called a gastric bypass. And I'm a bariatric surgeon. I'm very in favor of bariatric surgery for obesity, but not gastric bypass because of the metabolic nature. And then they have no clue about what caused obesity in the first place. Zero clue. So they encourage them to eat carbohydrates. Because carbohydrates are so important for the brain. You must eat carbohydrates. And if your blood sugar is dropping, you need to eat more carbohydrates. They have no clue, zero clue, about what probably everybody that's watching this video right now understands intuitively, something called insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is a condition of chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption and Sugar is toxic in any space in the human body. So when, you, when your blood sugar goes up, the pancreas responds to that by releasing massive amounts of insulin to clear the sugar. To clear that sugar. And for most people, they remain hyperglycemic or normal glycemic with very, very high insulin levels. And obesity specifically is a condition of insulin resistance mediated by hyperinsulinemia. Because if they were not hyperinsulinemic, they could not have gotten the sugar into their fat cells and they couldn't have turned the sugar into fat and become morbidly obese so they could have a gastric bypass. But on the other hand, so on the other hand, the other group of people that cannot produce a lot of insulin, they got low insulin production, they become diabetic very early, they're not enormous, so they don't get bariatric surgery, they go on some diabetes medication. So by definition, this gastric bypass population are all hyperglycemic, hyperinsulinemic and relatively normal glycemic. So their blood sugars are not that high, but they're eating a lot of sugar. So they may go up a little bit, but they're not diabetic. Why well, don't have diabetes? It's not that their pancreas is suddenly magically growing new insulin producing cells. They're as profoundly hyperinsulinemic as they were, but they can't eat the same amount of sugar. So what happens, they eat a little bit of sugar, they trigger this massive release of insulin, and the insulin is, let's say they ate two bags of Oreo cookies before. Now because of the bypass, they're only eating two or three, uh, or, or maybe half a rack of Oreo cookies. So they're not getting the sugar low, they're still getting the insulin, re insulin release because they're insulin resistant, and then what happens, they've got too much insulin, the, in the sugar's cleared, and they become hypoglycemic. Then they've got to eat more sugar. And it makes the problem worse and worse and worse and worse. The problem here, folks, is hyperinsulinemic insulin resistance. High insulin and insulin resistance by the cells that should be taking up the sugar, the muscle cells and other things. They're blocking that. So what do they do? 
They chop out the pancreas to get rid of the insulin. <sighs> what, folks, is the treatment? The treatment is a ketogenic diet. Get them to quit eating carbohydrates and eat more fat, become fat adapted, and this will fix itself. The more carnivorous they can be, the quicker this gets better. And also, if they've had a gastric bypass, they're, they're malabsorbing fat and protein, so they're losing lean muscle mass, which is contributing to the hyperglycemia and to the crash. And probably three years out, that's happening to an extraordinary, uh, in an extraordinary situation. And those people, about 80% of the calories they're consuming is sugar. Oh, but it's healthy fruit. It's healthy, uh, it's healthy protein bars. No, it's not. It's sugar, 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 sugar. Because that's what's entering your bloodstream. And for my colleagues not to understand that, in my opinion, is malpractice. Because they're choosing not to understand it. I've spoken at these conferences. I just spoke in Oxford earlier this year. Oh, yeah, we understand that. No, we don't. We don't practice that way. We don't practice that way. So now we're using all these GLP-1 agonists to block the production of sugar by our livers. But we're not treating the problem, which is hyperinsulinemic insulin resistance. Once you treat that, and that should have been treated before this person's surgery, when you get them on a ketogenic diet in the months before their surgery, the surgery is extremely effective without consequence negative consequence at losing weight because they're eating real food and even if they can only absorb a small amount of that they're at least getting enough in but if they're only eating a small amount of crap but most of what they're eating is crap they're not getting enough macronutrients in and now you get the situation where they're now chopping out the pancreas and then what happens to these people is they now can't produce enough enzymes to break down fat and protein the lipases that come from the pancreas the other, home, the other enzymes that come from the pancreas are now missing and in the toilet. So these patients are screwed because their pancreas is in a bucket somewhere. But this is the rabbit hole that we go down when we are trained in epidemiology, not physiology. And when we don't understand a simple, simple thing like the Randall cycle, which is where the human body will always, number one, preferentially get rid of the sugar in our, the excess sugar in our bloodstream, but the human body is preferentially adapted the cells prefer fatty acids and ketones and medium chain triglycerides as its primary fuel source. And the use of sugar is a default option. It's the default option by the human body. It is not the preferred option. We're going to talk more in the very next video is going to be about the Randall cycle. And the, the understanding and the misunderstanding of the Randall cycle. But this, this is just a mind-blowing, a mind-blowing rabbit hole that my colleagues, my esteemed colleagues, are going down because of the failure of their training in epidemiology, not physiology, and their inability to understand that, number one, carbohydrates are the cause of obesity. Number two, actually, the people's relationship with carbohydrates is the cause, carb addiction. Number two is that fat is necessary for the human diet, but carbohydrates are not. They fix those two things. They address the carb addiction and they increase the fat protein ratio and got these people to eat more meat. Then their acquired nasidioblastosis would magically go away. Boggles my mind. But if you try to talk to them about it, they're experts. I can't help an expert because they're experts. I'm not an expert. I'm a student. I'm learning more. I know a lot. I'm always learning more. But this just blew my mind, folks. Blew my mind mind that we would do this to people and have done this to people because we don't understand disease processes this is like bloodletting like using leeches actually we still do use leeches from time to time and this is why bariatric surgery has such a bad reputation i love bariatric surgery i think for certain people it is very necessary we gotta understand what it does we gotta understand what else people we have to help our patients with to make sure it's successful I'm baffled and I'm, I'm embarrassed, embarrassed by this lapse in the availability of science that's out there. And these are prestigious programs. So if you've had bariatric surgery and you're struggling with hypoglycemia, postprandial hypoglycemia, come and see me. We'll talk. 
Don't do, don't do what these guys told you. Don't have your pancreas chopped out. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. If you want more information, if you have barrier, if you've had bariatric surgery and you don't understand why you're struggling or why you're malnourished or why you're having drops in your blood sugar, come and see me. We can figure this out. We can help you to do this. Text 561-517-0642. WhatsApp text. Um, leave a voicemail. We'll get back to you and set up the visit. But please understand how your body works before you make uh, uh, changes to it. And if you like the content, hit the subscribe button to hear more. Hit the like button. Leave comments. Leave comments down below. But this is why the world maligns something that is potentially so beneficial. Till next time.